Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Tuesday morning at come 1211 with your host, me, Dr. White. All right. What I'd like to do today is, first of all, I'm going to go back to the gas law problems. We're going to do some practice there. Then we'll do the lab. And you'll get out early today. Yay. All right. Oh, I forgot to say something important. Don't forget, this week, you should be taking test number one at the Glen Allen COD Testing Center, either today, tomorrow, or Thursday. On Saturday, I'll pick up the test because the testing center isn't open on Friday, and I'll get the grades out by sometime Sunday afternoon, if not earlier. So don't forget, this week, today through Thursday, today's Tuesday, you should be taking test number one at the Glen Allen Testing Center of COD, College of DuPage. All right, now I can get to work. All right, everybody see ideal gas law on your screen? Thank you. All right, yesterday I talked about the ideal, the ideal gas law, and that is PV equal NRT. And the ideal gas law, P is in pressure, is pressure in atmospheres. V is volume in liters. N is the number of moles. And the temperature, T, is in Kelvin. R is the universal gas law constant. There are many ways of defining R for this class. I will define it as zero, not I, but it's defined as 0 0.0821 atmospheres, liters, mole, K. And it's important. These different variables have to be in the right units. You'll never see a gauge I haven't that measures pressure in atmospheres. It's either tor or millimeters of mercury or in the United States inches, but we won't use that in this class. Volume liters I'll use. I've never seen a way of calculating how much you have, not calculate, measuring moles. You measure weight and you need to know how to convert weight to moles. We've did that. You should know how to do that for test number one. Hint. Next, temperature. I have never seen a thermometer or temperature gauge in Kelvin. Yes, degrees C, degrees F, but not Kelvin. For this class, like in most science or chemistry, thermometers are in degrees C, which you have to calc convert. And like I said, the universal gas law constant is this. So let's take a look. at the following. All right, let me read it for you in case you can't read my printing. Uh, oh, first thing, 15 points. Yep, 15. 
uh, remember what I'm going through today will be on quiz number three, not test one. All right, a car tire contains 0.4312 grams of nitrogen gas. N2 is nitrogen gas at 755 Tor and 25 degrees C. What is the volume of the car tire? So what I'd like you to do here first, we're going to do this stepwise. What are you being asked to find? What are you given? Write that down when you're done. Give me a thumbs up. Let me try something. Nope, it only does that at the bottom. All right, all I'm asking you to find is what are you being asked to find? What are you given? Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Gianna. See, I like to give everybody time to finish. All right. Well, what are you being asked to find is what is the volume and volume is V. What are you given? Well, you're given this weight. Remember, G is grams of nitrogen gas. You're given a pressure. Tor is the units of pressure. And you're given a temperature. Once you've done this, you don't have to look back up here again. <clears throat> so if we look at what we're given, is anything changing? And the answer is no. You're dealing with a gas. And by the way, it's 15 points. Of all the semester, this is the highest point type prod I'll ever give. And as soon as you see all those plus the hint, you know you're dealing with PV equal NRT, the ideal gas law. Now, because I had to change things per request to the department, I'll have to this weekend, where right now it's listed as test number three important information, I will be changing this to quiz three. And notice an important information, you'll be given this for quiz for three. You see the ideal gas law, P, pressure and atmosphere, V, volume and liters, and number of moles, T, temperature, and Kelvin, and R, the universal gas law, constant, the number, and its units. That will be given to you. Years ago, until I changed my mind or philosophy, students would have to memorize all this. I've cut down on that, yay, for you. Also, in important information, quiz number three, notice you'll have the conversion from degree C to Kelvin and 760 Tor equals 760 millimeters of mercury equal one atmosphere. <clears throat> Excuse me, that will be given to you. Oh, wrong thing. Uh... Right thing. 
Everybody see the problem now? Zoom just burped at me. Thank you, Gianna. All right, so right here, this is the equation we need to start with. And what are we trying to find? The volume. So how do you calculate the volume from PV equal NRT? You want V alone on one side. Oh no, P is there too. How do I get rid of something? When two things are multiplied, remember anything divided by itself equals the number one, cancels out. Therefore, to get rid of P, I'll divide P over P is one. But whatever I do to one side, I have to do the other side of an equation. This cancels out. I'm now left with, and I'm going to move down to here, V equals NRT over P. And don't forget, R equals 0 0.0821 atmospheres liter mole Kelvin. And if you look at these units, <clears throat> excuse me again. Oh, I hope I'm not losing my voice. Hold on. Mole, mole, mole. Nope, <laughs> my voice is working. And as I said, this will be given to you. And if you forget what units, look at R. You've got to have atmospheres, liters, and moles in K. Not degrees C, not grams, not tor. So that's an indication of what we have to do next. So let's get to work. Now N is moles. But we have 0 0.4312 grams of nitrogen. And we want to get to moles of nitrogen. And how do we do that? It's time to use your good buddy, your good friend, in unit analysis. And for many decades, yep, decades, it's been my good buddy, my good friend. Whatever you're trying to get to goes on top of the ratio. Whatever you're trying to get rid of goes underneath the ratio. Now, I don't know if I put it in, I'll have it in quiz number three, important information. I think I will. And notice here, this will also be in quiz three and also quiz four. One mole of a compound equals the molecular weight of that compound. And the molecular weight of that compound is the sum of all atomic weights of that compound. And hopefully you learned that, or will learn that for this week for test number one, and that will be given to you an in important information. So we know one mole of a compound, and before I go any further, let me write the units that this should be on this ratio. And one mole of a compound equals the molecular weight. So I need the molecular weight of nitrogen gas, which is two nitrogen atoms. And now, bear with me. All right, everybody see the periodic table on your screen. Thank you. All right, now, how do we find the atomic weight of nitrogen so we can get the molecular weight of nitrogen gas N2? You look at the periodic table underneath the chemical symbol for nitrogen N, you see 14.007. And Remember, on 
test one, and it'll be true for quiz three, four, five. There's no five. Uh, <laughs> is there? I don't know. Quiz three and four. And I think there's five and six. I'll look at my syllabus. And test number two, they'll say, please use proper all atomic masses, the three significant figures. They'll also say, please use proper significant figures. Key time. For all calculated answers. So 14.007, rounded off the three significant figures. Keep the one, keep the four, keep the zero. Use the second zero to round off. That's four or less. Drop the zero and seven. That's 14.0. So, everybody see the problem on the whiteboard now? Thank you, Gianna. So, two times 14.0. 28.0. This is an exact number, three significant figures. I'm done. It's 28.0. Notice grams of nitrogen divide by grams of nitrogen cancel out. And now I can pick up my calculator, turn it on, clear it. Four, three, one, two divided by 28, and the number I get, and my calculator was nice, I'll put it up here, one point five four times 10 to the minus two. So I've got this done, R is done, temperature is next. Now temperature has to be in Kelvin. How do we know that? If you look at important information, this will be changed to quiz number three. You'll see T, temperature, and Kelvin. Also, you're given Kelvin equals degrees C plus 273. Boy, this instructor is really nice. Don't tell anybody. All right. So. Right here, we need Kelvin. That's equal degrees C plus 273. That's equal to 25.0 degrees C. That's what we figured out up here. Plus 273 equals, and check, 298.0 Kelvin. So now we have our temperature. Oh, look what's left, pressure. And pressure has to be in atmospheres, ATM. And if you look at, which I'll change this weekend, hopefully, if I remember, test uh, quiz number three, important information right here. It will say 760 Tor equals 760 millimeters of mercury equal one atmosphere. This is a definition, 760, 760, and one are exact numbers. So we have 755 Tor. Know something, let me give myself a little more room. We want to get to atmospheres. And it's time to use your good buddy, your good friend, unit analysis. Whatever we're trying to get to goes on top of this ratio. Whatever we're trying to get rid of goes underneath. I'll write those units in. And where do I get a relationship? between atmospheres and tours. Well, if you forgot, you can look at important information, 760 tour equal one atmosphere. 760 tour 
equal one atmosphere. So one atmosphere, 760 Tor. Now these are both exact numbers because they're part of a definition. So this is three significant figures. All non-zero numbers are significant. My answer should be. So now I'll pick up my calculator. Before I do that, ooh, I forgot. Notice Tor divided by Tor cancel out. We're left with atmospheres. And our good buddy and our good friend, unit analysis, helped us out. So now I'll clear my calculator. Take 755 divided by 760. And I get this number. Actually, there are more on my calculator. Now, I'll let you round this off to three significant figures. Then I'll do it. Your turn. Round 9.9342 times 10 to the minus 1 to three significant figures. When you're done, give me a thumbs up. Thank you, Gianna. Thank you, Hannah. My turn. All right, to round this off to three significant figures, nine is my first significant figure. This nine is my second. The three is my third. The next number I use to round off is that four or higher. Or less, I mean, the four or less. And the answer is yes. So I drop this, and this becomes 9.93 times 10 to the minus one atmospheres. Am I done? No. This was 15 points. And when you do it yourself, it goes quicker because I'm taking it very slow. Remember, we figured V equals NRT over P. So what's N? 1.54 times 10 to the minus two moles. What's R? 0 0.0821 atmospheres, liter, mole, Kelvin. What's T? 298.0 Kelvin. And what's my pressure? 9.93 times 10 to the minus one atmospheres. Now, if I forget about the bottom, notice I have moles divided by moles. That cancels out. I have Kelvin divided by Kelvin. That cancels out. So now the top is this atmospheres liters. The bottom is atmospheres. Atmospheres divided by atmospheres cancel out. And I'm left with liters, which is a measure of volume. I'm on the right track. So now I can pick up my calculator, clear it. Remember, use this, not the minus over here, this minus on your keyboard to do minus scientific numbers for scientific notation, minus two times 0 0.0821 times 298.0. And I get a number and now I'm gonna divide it by 9.93 blue double E minus one
So here's what my calculator gives me. 3.79429 times 10 to the minus 1 liters. Now, when you do a calculation like this, you can round it off like I did all over here, three steps. And then this final one, you round off. And notice all these are 3, 3, 4, three significant figures. So you need to round this off to three significant figures. And I'll do that. Keep the three, keep the seven, keep the nine. Use the four to round off. Is that four or less? Duh, yep. So I'm gonna drop all that. And the correct answer Three point seven nine times ten to the minus one liter, or three hundred and seventy-five nine milliliters, and that would be the amount of nitrogen in the tire if you had these conditions. So again, listen carefully. Remember, hint: fifteen points PV on RT. But another way of doing it, which is, first of all, figure out. From the word problem, relax, take a deep breath. You can do word problems now in my class because I showed you how to attack them or do them. Did I tell you organic chemists are violent? We say this attacks that, and we do. And how do you attack this problem or solve it? You find out first, what are you being asked to find? Volume, what are you given? Once you determine... This is a gas, N2 is a gas, and you're not changing any variables, then you will use PV equal NRT. You solve for V or whatever you might sometimes be asked to find temperature or pressure, and you do it the same way. You solve for that variable by getting it alone on one side. And then once we have the formula V equal NRT divided by P, you have to remember for the ideal gas law, pressure and moles temperature have to be in the right units. Pressure, atmosphere, N is the number of moles, temperature, Kelvin. And I give you the conversion right here to do those conversions and right here. That will be an important information, quiz number three, which I've got to change this file. This is for test three. There's no test three. And here are the different ways going from grams to moles. We use unit analysis. Use this formula to go from degree C to Kelvin. And to convert from tor to atmospheres, we use the fact that one atmosphere equals 760 tor. And that's how you do it. Any questions on this? All right, let's continue. which is not what I want. All right, everybody see ideal gas law practice time on your screen? Thank you, let's move on. Now, there's something called molar mass. I'm gonna turn the switch, click. Will this be on test to the opposition? And using the ideal gas line, I think I mentioned this yesterday, uh, yesterday uh, and the weight of a gas, one can calculate molar mass of a gas. All right, now switches on. Another English chemist, remember I talked about how the industrial revolution using the steam engine, later on the gas engine to power equipment to make things like cloth, cotton was, and wool that was known in England. And they were the leaders in the Industrial Revolution. And 
a steam engine uses a piston and various English scientists, I don't even know if they were called chemists back then, came up with mathematical relationships that are always true, and we call those a law. And one of them was the English chemist or scientist Dalton. And Dalton's law of partial pressures is, and I'll never ask you what is it, but I'll ask you to know how to use it, is the total pressure exerted by, and this is key, a mixture of gases is the sum of the partial pressures of the individual gases. Hmm, what's a partial pressure? And hold on, I see the dot virus got me. There, all right, what is the partial pressure? <clears throat> That's a the pressure that a gas in a mixture would exert if it were alone under the same conditions. So what Dalton's law of partial pressure is, the total pressure, P is pressure, these are the partial pressures, is the sum of all atomic, of the <laughs> sum of all partial pressures, where N means if you have four, this would be partial pressure four. And notice I don't say memorize it, but know how to use this because in important information, quiz number three, you'll be given this, but you gotta know how to use it. So let's have some fun with Dalton's law of partial pressures. This will take a while to write out. There's a lot to write out. I wonder if I could type this quicker. Oops, <laughs> I could have written it out quicker. Two days later, I'll be finished. Home stretch. All right, that's a lot to write. If a mixture of nitrogen gas and two and argon gases has a nitrogen partial pressure of 301 torr and an argon that's, let me make that better. An argon partial pressure of 20 torr, then what is the pressure of the mixture? So what are we being asked to find? Well, the pressure of the mixture and that's called P total. What are we given? Well, the partial pressure of nitrogen, and we'll write it this way, P sub N2 is 301 torr. And the partial pressure of argon is 20 torr. 
So once you've figured out that, guess what? You don't have to look back here. And so notice we're being asked to find a total pressure and we're given partial pressures. As soon as, as, soon as you see the word partial pressure, you know you should use Dalton, Dalton's law of partial pressures. In this case, P total equals the sum of the partial pressures, and they are P nitrogen plus P partial pressure argon. And since we figured it out, that's 301 tor plus 20 tor. And remember, when you're adding, you get the same number of significant figures to the right of the decimal as the number that has the fewest significant figures to the right. Both of these have zero. So the correct answer is 321 tor. So let's go through this again. We determined that we're being asked what's the pressure of the mixture, which is called P total. We're given the partial pressure, P sub N, in this case, when I mean P this, and this N is whatever element or molecule you're looking at the partial pressure. And here we have 301 for nitrogen, 20 for argon, and from Dalton's law, this total pressure is the sum of all partial pressures. And in this case, the partial pressures are nitrogen and argon. We figured out those numbers from the problem, add them together, and you're done. I'm going to try something. No, it isn't going to work. Almost done. All right, five points. If a mixture of krypton and neon gases has a krypton partial pressure of 221 tor and a neon partial pressure of 305 tor, then what is the total pressure of the mixture? All right, let's do this stepwise. Your turn. What are you being asked to find? What are you given? Have fun.
remember all I'm asking you to find is what are you being asked to find? What are you given? <clears throat> Excuse me. Remember, I'm not asking you to do the whole problem. Just what are you being asked to find? What are you given? All right, I'll give you another 30 seconds, then I'll do it. All right, my turn. What are we being asked to find? What is the total pressure of the mixture? And we call that pressure total. What are we given? Krypton partial pressure, which we show by this. And that's equal to 121 torr. Remember, tor is a measure of pressure. We're also given a neon partial pressure, which we write like this. P is pressure, subscript means partial pressure, is 305 tor. And once we have this, we don't have to look there anymore. And notice, as soon as you see the word partial pressure, that means you should consider using, more than consider, Dalton's law of partial pressures. And the total pressure equals the sum of the partial pressures. So I'm going to do that. So P total. equals the sum of the partial pressures, which are partial pressure krypton, partial pressure neon. And we figured those numbers right here and here. So that's 121 to uh, 121 tor. 
plus 305 torque. And if I pick up my calculator, I can do this in my head. So I will. And this is the answer you get. And that's how you do Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. Now, if you give the total pressure and one of the partial pressures, and you have to calculate the other, then you do P total minus what you're given, something like this. If you're given a total pressure and one of its partial pressures, let's say you only have two in the mixture, then the P of the unknown is equal to P total minus P given because P total, and I'll probably do one of these tomorrow, equal P given plus P answer what you're trying to find. And then you can go to here. I'll do one of these tomorrow. All right, with that, instead of taking a break now, I'm gonna go straight through because the lab is quick. Today's lab is real quick. So if nobody has any problems, we'll just go straight through We'll be out of here in about five minutes. Yep, that quick. Wrong button. Let me log into Blackboard. Let me try it again. All right, every, uh, let me make sure you can see it. Everybody see on Blackboard assignments, Lab 8, Periodicity and the periodic table. Thank you, Anna. Now, couple of things. One, it says here, and I haven't pushed this a semester, but for this lab, I will. Please be sure to take one picture of your periodic table uh, card deck three in use and include it in your lab report. Now, I don't have written here, and I'll change it later today also. I had, we're in the lab report, asks you to work with another student. Don't, you don't have to. Now, something, let's go through this. Here I have the different periodic table lab. And that's not what I want yet. This is the one I want. Everybody see the, thank you, John, <laughs> you got ahead of me. Now here they talk about the table, uh, periodic table. And for this lab, in this little plastic bag that had periodicity in the, Periodic table. You'll find deck number one. Notice I put a rubber band around it. They didn't. Deck number two. And deck number three. Now, what I found for those who play Monopoly, and I did when I was a kid, my sister and I played cutthroat Monopoly. It was quite serious when we played. All right, now, don't these look like the 
properties in Monopoly, the size of the card? And doesn't this look like the chance card size for Monopoly? I wonder if that's where they got the idea for this. Oh, look, Boardwalk, I win, no. But today's lab, you'll be using these cards. Now, in the lab, they talk about the periodic table and how it evolved. And the person who's credited for coming up with the first widely used periodic table is the Russian, I believe he's Russian chemist, Mendeleev. And let's do something I've never done before. Great moments in Dr. White's. Chemistry class. If you go to Wikipedia, and let me make sure everybody can see this, and I'd recommend you look at this for this lab, you see the periodic table, they talk about it. And if we go to the history, Mendeleev, he is listed as a Russian chemist, I thought so, he had the definitive breakthrough. And he was the one who defended and dedicated most of his time and helped make the periodic table what it is today. This was only in back in 1869, which is not that long ago in the history of mankind. And he came up with his, and then based on what he did and predicted, other chemists continued with his work. Now, the atomic number was proposed really in 1913. That's over less than 100 years ago. You've heard of Rutherford coined the term atomic number. And then later chemists improved. And finally, different chemists came up with the periodic table as we uh, now know. Wrong one. Mm, wrong one again. Let me close something because I'm got too many things open. Let's go back to here. I uh, here's what I was looking for. All right, now as you read through this lab, they'll explain about the objectives, and you have four different activities, and some of these activities. You'll be asked to do things. Here are the decks of cards. Oh, wait, <laughs> hold on. Everybody, that, that's not what I want. All right, everybody see the deck of materials on your screen now? Oh, okay, thank you, John. These are the deck of cards I showed you, deck one, two, and three. And what you'll do, prepare it like they have here. Then you have various activities. Now, if you look on activity one, step nine, 10, 11, and 13, they tell you to take a picture. Don't wait until activity three with deck three and just take one picture. I don't want you taking a million pictures. Oh, it's not a million, but go through and do the activities. And activity two, you'll be using deck card two and C9 and 11 and 13. They ask you to take a picture. I'm going like this with a camera. 
I bet most of you don't own a regular camera, but you have a camera in your cell phone or your parents' cell phone, and you don't have to do this. But do the activities, and I'm going to show you in, uh, in deck activity three, you'll use deck three and take, say, number 10, either that one, take a picture of. I'm not going to read through all the activities you're supposed to do. And yeah, do number 10. That will be the picture you have to take. And then there's an activity for of what to do. And here they give you the actual periodic table. Notice their atomic number is on the left. All the tables I've used, they're on the upper right. But it's the same thing on the upper top. Now, this is important. Does everybody see Lab 8 on the screen right now from Blackboard? Thank you, Gianna. At the bottom, does everybody see I have periodic table questions to answer? You don't have to answer all of them in the lab report. Why not? Well, it's a lot of work, and I don't think it's necessary. And does everybody see on your screen now, periodic table, let me make it larger. Questions to answer. Do you see that on your screen now? All right. For activity one, in the lab report, which I'll show you, you only have to answer question one and six. For activity two in the lab report, only one and seven. Activity three, only questions one, three, and four. And act, excuse me, activity four, and that is questions one, four, nine, 10, 13, 14, and 15. So it's not that hard. You should be able to knock this off in about 24 hours of work. No, I'm just kidding. It shouldn't take that long. And the lab report you file, uh, you will fill out. I have both as a PDF and a Word document is periodicity and the periodic table. You've seen the student name and date. And here, you don't have to do characteristic one or table one. Just do the questions underneath. I think I had one and six for activity one. And don't have to do the characteristics or table two and answer the questions I have listed for activity two. Same thing for three. And for four, you don't have to do examples like here, but under four, I have the questions one and whatever other ones I have, and that's it. That's all you have to, you don't have to do all of them. And don't forget, be careful, don't get a paper cut. Actually, these are pretty thick paper. Let's Hold on. Nope, you can't cut your, well, you could, but they did a nice job. It's nice card stock. So these are the decks you're supposed to use. And for deck three, that one, I think it's number 10, take a picture and include it in your lab report. If you don't take a picture, I'll take off one or two points if you don't include a picture. So make sure you include a picture. And with that, I'm done for today. Don't forget, today, tomorrow, or Thursday, if you haven't already, you should take test number one at the COD Glen Ellen Testing Center. You'll need a picture ID, and I bring my own calculator because you'll know how to use that. Tea break. And with that, I'm done for today. Have a nice rest of the day. Stay warm. It's cold out there. And with that, I'll say bye. Gang gesund.